I'm Fat Tony. We're at Show Studio and we're talking to Sunny Hall about life and recovery, life before recovery and life after recovery. Hi, I'm Sunny Hall. I'm a poet, a realist and I do a little bit of modelling. Every now and then? Yeah, a little bit. Today we were down on the Thames and you were, you were re reading one of your poems entitled The Thing That Killed My Mum. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that poem and mm. why you wrote it? That poem was about, well, my mum overdosed on heroin about three years ago and that was a turning point when I, I was already kind of off my head on alcohol and drugs, but then when that happened, I, it kind of just set me off, you know, I like heightened everything and didn't really know how to deal with it, I guess. And then, and that poem I wrote after getting clean and it was kind of like a closure on my views on heroin addiction and what, what's underneath my addiction and hers and how I'm kind of saying how we're both very similar and like how I wish she kind of knew that because when she passed away I wasn't exactly open to her about how I was struggling do you know mm -hmm. what I mean and I knew that she was struggling like the last time I saw her she was quivering wreck you know but I mean so what, what was it like for you growing up in that environment what, what age did you start using drugs yourself? Um, it, around the age of 12, I started smoking weed. Uh -huh. And then, and then it, it just it went from there. I felt like it was, it was almost like a safety, a blanket mm, over me. Of course, yeah. And then I um, started drinking. Basically, I, I started getting like paranoid because of the skunk. So uh -huh. I, stopped the, I stopped the skunk and then I went on to the booze. You transferred. Yeah, it's yeah. similar with me. I, I did exactly the same thing. It started off with alcohol, and then of course that was never enough. And I would drink it till I blacked out, yeah, yeah, not yeah. knowing that I had a drink problem. Mm. And then, so what I would so one time someone offered me some drugs, some cocaine, and I did it, and it kind of prolonged the amount of time that I could drink for. Yeah. So kind of <laughs> like that, they went from that moment. I was sixteen. From that moment, they went hand in hand because it mm. was like a natural progression. The alcohol would numb the cocaine mm. and the cocaine would outrun the, 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 the alcohol. Yeah. So I was never getting drunk. I was always yeah. just maintaining. Just maintaining. Your, yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely. That, that was a tricky thing with me because it was like I had the, the downers were like, so I'd be numb. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Course. I needed that like blissful state at all times, oblivion. But then obviously I'd, I'd feel like I was going to fall asleep. So I'd, I'd use the cocaine to like pick me up. And it was that vicious cycle. Did it get, when, for you, with that moment of change, does it get so painful that it, you couldn't go any further with it? What, what was that, the point where you thought, I can't do this anymore? It was almost, like, it was in the back of my head that I was going to be like my mum and my dad, because my dad was mm. also a drug addict. I was adopted when I was four, so it was like, I knew the effects of addiction from a very young age, but I... When I fell into it, it kind of it felt right almost. And like by the age of eighteen, I was telling myself, "This is me now." Mm -hmm. And my brother would always be in the back of my ear saying, "You're going to be just like dad. You're going to be just like mum." And like so everyone was telling me to get clean, but I, I I was just pushing people away. And then so, someone called me when I was starting my day on Gloucester Road. I was at the pub, eleven o'clock. I I got just bought my pills trying to shake the withdrawals and someone called me and kind of mentioned this rehab in Thailand mm. called The Cabin and I, I um, something changed in my head but they didn't call it a rehab, they called it like a, a, get, a getaway. <laughs> a getaway like, yeah. So I was like, I need a break and then before I knew it, I was there um, in, in Thailand. Because mm. yeah. for me, it was a natural progression as well. Because you know, my dad was an alcoholic. Mm. So that addiction, I, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that we're born with that gene and that mm. it's, it's in our wiring. So, you know, it, my parent, my dad was an alcoholic, his dad was an alcoholic, and all my dad's brothers and sisters were alcoholics. Mm. So it was embedded me, and I always grew up in that environment where there was such chaos going on, and the only attention I ever knew was negative attention, so that was all always, I yeah. ever caused was negative attention, mm -hmm. like causing trouble or pretending to be ill and stuff like that, just so I got that attention. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of just think, I always thought I'm never going to be like my dad. I'm never going to do what my dad did. 
But you know what? It was. Yeah. It was. I, it, I, at that, even at that age, I was powerless over it. Yeah. yeah. It, I was. It was a destiny. Destiny. Right? It was a destiny. Yeah, literally. And and I can't just think. You know the fact that you got clean. How old are you now? You're, you're 20, twenty. Twenty. Man, years that's old, kind of yeah. insane. And you're 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 coming up tw to nearly two years clean, years, yeah. which is remarkable to th at such a young age to actually get a grip on life. Because it took me till I was forty-one. Yeah. Wow. See so, you know what I mean? I used and abused for twenty-eight years, mm -hmm. and I kind of just think, yeah. Oh my God! If my if I if I'd stopped at twenty. What my life would be like today, but then again, that wasn't my journey. Yeah, do you completely. Get what I, mean? I don't live in. I'm not one of these people that lives in regret. Well, yeah, dwelling I, on yeah, it. You, no, can't, you can't. You know, so you you said that was the, where we filmed today on that pier was like the last. You had a picture taken with your mum on that pier. Yeah, yeah. At that very spot. Yeah, yeah. But it was also the, one of the last places you saw your mum, right? Yeah, yeah. Because that specifically down on the South Bank, yeah, mm. was where. I saw my mum, we met up once or twice a year from the age of four um, down the South Bank or Covent Garden because she's from Essex so she would get the training yeah. and we would, would meet and my brother would be there and the last time I saw her was was there so it, like for me to go down there and do that it was like a full circle mm. thing which like I've found since getting clean like it's happened like so, so many full circles in like the positive the most positive ways you know it makes things make more sense you know mm -hmm. when it happens like that and since you got clean what's happened in your life how, how much has it changed Wow. Without um, you know, you're not sitting here. Oh, my life's this, my life's that, little boasting. Mm. But there's so you've come such a long way from those days of using to where you are mm, now, mm. And, and that's due to recovery, right? Completely. It, it still baffles me, like where I'm at today. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because it's like, I, as I said, I always thought I'd be a, a druggie or an alky, mm. you know. And then now it's like, just under two years down the line, I'm. I'm, I've got clarity and I'm able to sit with myself and I actually feel like strong and able to cope, you know, mm -hmm. and like some days are bad, some days are good, as you know, but like it, it's now I've got the tools and I think it comes from being honest with myself for the first mm -hmm. time ever. Yeah, majorly, yeah. Ever, you know, and but now I'm writing like my poetry and I'm, I'm looking at publishing my book in a couple months, start of 2019 and I'm doing short feel like all of the creative stuff that like I always kind of aspired to like I always looked up to like Marilyn Manson or Chet Baker or all these amazing mm. writers and figures and I was like why can't I like create stuff yeah. but I was so disconnected from myself and then now it's like I'm 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 creating my own stuff because what we do is when we use drugs and we drink, use drink we kind of cut the power off out to anything mm. else apart from, and all our power goes into getting off our nuts and changing the way we feel. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then when we suddenly re-plug into the power as such, it's when we get clean, every, those nut. juices start flowing again. I mean, for me, I actually used to write poetry when I was off my nut. Yeah. It was always about death. It was yeah. always about death, always about who I hated. Funnily enough, oh, and it was all uh, literally, it would just be such garbage. Yeah. And I used to like think, Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this book published. And I always thought <laughs> I was gonna die at 27. I thought, I thought, I'm never gonna live beyond 27. Why would anyone want to live beyond 27? It's like that, that turning point of something you're getting old. And I thought, I don't ever want to be old. Yeah. I was gutted when I got to 28 and I was still alive. And you're still alive. You know what I mean? And now it. I'm 53 and I, I, you know, thank God. 53? Yeah, I'm 53. No way. I didn't even yeah, know. Right, thanks. Oh, but you know, it's, I'm 53. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my life's amazing. My life's yeah. amazing because you know what? I embrace life. Mm -hmm. I love life. Yeah. I, I couldn't think of anything worse than to be in that position where I was locked in a room and and, and just, just trying to kill myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, Completely. you you've, you've yeah. literally you, the fact that you're 20 years of age is is is, is amazing, and that fact that you've come into recovery at such an age, I think it's 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 a triumph. Triumph. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a triumph. I couldn't put it any other way. It's a strange one. Like I, it feels yeah like I'm I'm just moving my feet yeah, and it's mm. all you know what I mean. But it's like people like you and loads of other people that are around me that have kind of like shaped my my support group and how I how I'm able to function now like as a human being in reality. Do you know what I mean? But 
Because yeah. you know, when we get clean and we put down drink and drugs, we can go, we can be, we can see, and we can be whoever we want to be. Because mm-hmm. we, we're in control of our power. We, we, you know, to a certain extent, we, 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 we write our own destiny. We mm. write where we're going. Whereas before, we, it was, it was you, never. You're like a closed fucking yeah. Completely. Okay, so what would you say, right, to anyone who, who's 17, 18, who's, who's bang on, bang on it, lost in drugs? What mm. would you say to them? Wow. Um, I hate that question. It's, it's, fu- that it's question. a weird question because one of my half, bro- my half sister's actually going through, like, I'm not going to go into it, but it's like, it's tricky because I don't even know what to say to her. But like, for me, it was like I had to kind of go, go somewhere to get to get mm. back up you know yeah of course um but the lies and the dishonesty is what digs the hole deeper i think you know mm. the minute i started being being truthful and opening my mouth it it made more it shone light on on the darkness that i was holding you know so i, I i'd say that honesty is key at the, at the beginning because otherwise you're, you're still going to hide from mm. yourself and that's what addiction is to me just hiding and I always think that if you tell one lie in one area, that lie will seep into every other area of your life. Yeah, and before yeah. you know it, you're lying on lie on lie on lie, like I used to. People, yeah. never, people wouldn't even ask me the time, because they knew yeah. I'd lie. <laughs> and that is a fact. Oh. I'd lie about everything, just for the sake of lying. Mm-hmm. Because it was, cool. it was just, I couldn't be bothered. I couldn't be bothered. It was so much easier to just to, to lie, this. because everyone would say, oh, you know, how are you doing? I'd be like, I'm fine, I'm great. And mm. So I was dying. Yeah, I was yeah. dying, and today I'm, it's not like that. Today, I can be honest about how I'm mm, feeling, and mm. that doesn't always please people. No, you know, but I, people... I kind of think if you're honest to, to, within you, about everything that you do, which doesn't always please people, as I said, but yeah, some yeah. Th- some days I'll, that someone asks me how I'm doing, and I'll tell them exactly <laughs> how I'm doing, and they're like, well, "All right, mate, like, I don't even know what to say." <laughs> yeah, you ask how you're doing. You know, yeah. I'm like this, but don't ask, right? Yeah, End don't story. ask if you don't want to know. You know what I mean? But that's that with the poetry and like what's really saved me is 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 the creativity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it, it, I think a big thing about addiction is also like lack of meaning and lack of purpose, and that like draws into like the the low self worth and stuff like that. And the minute I got clean, it's like these things started coming my way, and and it allowed me to build on that. You know, mm. um, I think. Yeah. Also, you just like you just come back from New York, and and w- w- when I was using, I was lost in addiction. I, the only place I ever travelled to was either the off license or to my dealer's house. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. I travel the world because I have that freedom. Yeah. And it just you know you know for well you can walk through customs and you ain't gonna get bored. Yeah, but that, still that, get that feeling though. is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still get paranoid though, but that's just a, I think it goes to authorities and anything yeah, like now. Right. But yeah, there's not there's a lot less to worry about. That's that's the beauty of it, you know. Where yeah. do you see yourself in like five years time? God forbid, when you're 25. Oh, fuck me. Um, I hope like just helping others with my story because I I've seen how addiction can just fuck fuck like my whole family and mm. like, I want to just keep carrying my message like you do and. And creating, like, I'm excited to see what comes out what, with the creativity, yeah. what comes out of me. You know, I feel like I've only, it's like I've opened this part of me that has been kind of hiding for years. Uh-huh. And now it's like it's time to flooding grow, right? out, yeah, to grow, really, you know. But really and truly just, just to stay clean and, 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 and kind of expose myself, do you know what I mean? Mm. Through different forms of... I think freedom is such a gift, right? Mm. And, we, and when we get it, we, at first we just, we want to change the world. When I got clean, it was like, right, I'm going to do this. I'm, I need to apologise to everyone. I need to make amends. We need to... And, yeah. and you know what? It's, it, at first, it's such a race to, to want to... Because we... Mm. That, to have that feeling of freedom, you just don't know what to do with it. And, and as soon as you start to embrace life and you start to move on with it, everything comes really apparent. Yeah, and it yeah. is about freedom. It is about freedom of choice and freedom of being able to go and do whatever you want to do and then going home and yeah. leaving when you want to leave. And yeah. being, we said this earlier about saying no without having to explain yourself. Mm-hmm. And all those things that we take for granted, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. yeah. being able to follow your gut. Because, mate, we're not, yeah. 
<laughs> but I followed my gut in back in, a couple of years ago, mate. I'll end up in a fuck. I don't even know where I'll end up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dead. Being able to trust yourself, really. There you it? go. You hit the button yeah. now. And there. as soon as you trust yourself, you can trust other people. And that's yeah. a really big part because, I, I, you know, I never trusted myself because I, I couldn't be trusted with anything. No. Do you no. know what I mean? I couldn't be, you know, if I said I was going to be somewhere at one o'clock, yeah. I didn't say what day it was one o'clock. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's the way yeah, it was. Yeah. And now I, I you know, because I trust myself, I can trust other people. Mm, and it's mm, a big mm. thing. It's a really Completely. big thing. You can trust yourself to ride your scooter around. I love yeah. my scooter. Don't bring my scooter into it. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier on today, when you ripped the pages out of, the, out of, your, out of your notebook mm. with, uh, and, uh, on camera, I mean, how did that feel? Was it, it was a really freeing experience? It was quite heavy, like part of me disconnects, you know what I mean, when I'm doing something like that. But it, that, it, was, very, it was freeing in a way of, it made me think about the whole, I guess, how far I've come and like, it, it, I felt connected with my mum in a way and that's why I, I wrote something like that, you know, but... Yeah, w watching them go down the Thames was, was the, like was the main, go, right? yeah, was, was the was the part that kind of like when it hit me, how I don't know. It's it's like this conflict of like I felt connected with her, but there's always this part of me that w wants her to know that because I know she carried a lot of shame about she her knows. addiction. She yeah, knows. yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm a firm believer that they, you know w w that, that I, I think that when people die. That I don't, I, I'm not a firm believer of saying, oh, they're in heaven. What I do believe is that their spirit's with us. Yeah, they're with yeah. us always. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I, when I lost my father, I, uh, for years, and I still do, I see him out the corner of my eye sometimes mm. in places, or I turn into him. Wow. I say yeah. things. <laughs> I think, oh, my God, I'm my dad. Yeah. And I kind of think that in itself is, 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 is the, the, the spirit that still lives on in them. Mm, mm, so they're never really gone. Do you get what I mean? Really... And I think... Seeing those bits of paper go down the Thames today was actually a really freeing and uh, mm. a really sort of, as you said, full circle closure thing. Mm. I think it was really, really poignant and really beautiful. Mm. And mm. I think the fact that you can talk on camera at, at coming up to two years clean is, is remarkable about your story because I think so many people will get something from Sunny Hall. Mm. I think mm. that's amazing. And I, and I, and Thank you so much for doing this with us, Show Studio. Thank you, mate. Love you, man. Love you, mate. Thank you, mate. God wow. bless you.